This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling. And uh, we're back after a little hiatus if you guys are uh, keeping up with us here. But we got a pretty good lineup and a, and a, a good first first time back. We had to give her a couple weeks to get on the show so she, she could reacclimate to the time zone and everything. Uh, but we're going to be talking to uh, Raylan in a moment about her trips to Japan and everything else going on in the wrestling world for her. Uh, and uh, hopefully pandas too. I, I really look forward to just talking about pandas really in the long run. This is the Panda Mayhem Show now. But anyways, you can check out everything at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Dot com, or you can check out a lot of people that we uh, talk with over at IndieWrestling.us, uh, including the posts for this and past shows. Please drop us a line at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. If you have any questions for people that are announced already for future interviews, or if there's anybody you think we should be checking out, hey, we can't watch all the independent wrestling. Hell, I can't even keep up with my WWE Network account these days. Uh, so we're looking to you. It's, it, it's, it's a big, wide wrestling world. And uh, if there's anybody that's uh, making some noise you think we should have a conversation with, please hit us up over there. And, of course, please support the Wrestling Mayhem Show series of podcasts on Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you to everybody who's been supporting us over there. So let's get right to our guest because I think we got a lot to talk about here. Ray Lynn is joining us here in the studio. First time in the studio. Well, actually, wait, wait. You were in the studio before but not for uh, uh, one of our podcasts. That's right. I used it as a dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> we had um, uh, Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh uh, was across the street here. Uh, l- 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 September, maybe something oh, like that. A beautiful day in September here in Pittsburgh. Yes. Uh, in, in, in a parking lot. It, but it was great. It was an awesome fiesta kind of situation. It and was awesome. There was not the a lot. The tacos of- were good. <laughs> Tacos are amazing. It's, it's dangerous over here for us right across the street. But um, yeah, you got to participate in that. And and since there wasn't much room for everybody, it was just like, hey, guys, use the studio across the street, right? Yeah. Thank God you guys took good care of us, too. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, it was an unusually hot day, too, mm-hmm. if I remember right. Yeah. So it was nice to be able to come over here and cool off and get ready and everything. Well, let's talk about that first. Have you ever been part of like this, like a lucha, like quote fiesta kind of show like this? What this is? Yes. Been? Um, because I lived in California for a of while. Of course. So, oh, we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I did a couple of taco festivals. Actually, the one I sticks out in my head the most. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life wrestling. Um, it was on Laguna Beach, literally on the beach. Oh, nice. Um. So it's like it's like bash on the beach style. Yeah, some forty one was playing. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, the offspring. There was tacos, free beer, and it was craft beer. It wasn't like oh, here's a free Bud Light. It was nice. like free craft beer. So I was in heaven. That's great. So lucha heaven, lucha heaven, <laughs> <laughs> versus the lucha underground tapings were lucha hell, uh, <laughs> pretty much. Well, there's a lot of death in those, but anyways. Um, but no, yeah, that was that was a, a quite a. Interesting experience. So how does it compare to California having uh, uh, that here in Pittsburgh of all places? You know, it seemed so I, I knew exactly what to expect because I had done something like that. Um, and it I felt like I was back in California. I really did, especially it just being like in a parking lot. Like mm. it, it had all the vibes that SoCal does. And then, like I said, the weather was perfect that day, too. So I, I, I recently got to do a, a Ted Lucha show at Anoki. Uh, dojo okay uh, in la and it, it, it is still like yeah that's the vibe though that was the vibe that it's was out the here total vibe yeah yeah people are drinking beers there's like a food usually it's like a food truck we had the food trucks here so it was it was very socal vibes that's awesome that's awesome but anyway so uh all kinds of culture with you yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh the biggest thing i wanted to have you back for of course you just did uh six weeks in japan and six i did was it six? three months three months in japan i was in japan for six three weeks? months wow <laughs> i think it was another trip that was supposed to be six weeks but i uh, yes yes, yes. Cause, <laughs> cause, cause actually asia has been like a long you know 
a goal for you. It has. And it was many, like, people don't know. They're like, oh, yeah, da, 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 you're lucky. I'm like, no, like, you don't even know all the heartbreak I had trying to get there. Like, there were so many times that I had been ready to go and my trip would get canceled at the very last. I'm saying, like, days before and I didn't have any Jeez. wrestling bookings and stuff like that. So I had a lot of disappointment going into it. So when it finally worked out, I was just too, too ecstatic. About That's great. It. Yeah. That's, and, and, and so you, how did this work out with Japan? Who were you working with over there? So I worked for a company named Marvelous. They're uh, a newer company. Um, it's ran by Chigosa um, Nagaya-san. And she's like the top female legend athlete over there. So she was our trainer. Um, I got in contact there, Nyla Rose. Uh, she's actually just got signed to AEW. Yeah. Uh, she was one of my first indie matches and we stayed in contact and I was like, I really nice. want to go to Japan. What do you suggest I do? And she gave me the contact info and I reached out to them. So I was really excited. I think it was... um. I was like really down in the dumps for a little bit. It was like last September. I want to say it was right after the Lucha show. I want to say I drank too much the night before. And I finally, because <laughs> I hadn't heard anything and I had sent my stuff in like a month or so before yeah. that. And I woke up and I went to the gym and I was lifting and I looked at my phone and it said, uh, Raylan, we'd like to invite you to Japan. And I was like, oh my God, I'm having a heart attack. This can't be real. And I'm like reading the message. It's like five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, who can I call and tell, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Especially because I, I know we, we've talked about before. There's a few instances that uh, you were like set to go and it just didn't work out. Yeah. Like passport in hand, mm. work visas already cleared, Jeez. plane tickets bought, bags not packed because I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so so tell me about, you know, getting to J Japan. Um, how one of my personal goals, this is why I invite everybody that goes to Japan on the show. <laughs> So, wait, what is it like, like kind of the culture shock coming from America, Pittsburgh area like this to, to, to Japan? Okay, so the first day I get there and you, you have to remember you have a 16 hour flight and you're, yep. I didn't sleep. I don't, I can't sleep on flights. I was up watching movies and just, I was too excited also to sleep. I just wanted to get there. Um, I didn't read the small print on the contract that said that there were a lot of dogs at the dojo. Right. So I didn't expect I walk in the door and I just hear all these dogs barking. Blah, 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 right. They're so loud. And the first thing I think is, oh, my God, I made a mistake. I need to go home. Right. I can't. I wild, can't do this. wild dogs live here. <laughs> yeah. 13. We had 13 dogs that lived at the dojo. How big was this dojo? Our, our dojo is pretty big. OK. Yeah. So our living quarters are really big. And then um, the dojo isn't quite attached, but it's like really close. Like. I that's good because I always hear about like how living quarters and facilities are just small because of the way Japan's laid out. We were outside of Tokyo about okay. an hour. Okay. So like our house was about the same size houses you would see here in Pittsburgh. So it was a pretty decent size house. Nice. There were a lot of us living there. I think I lived with, like I said, 13 dogs and nine girls. So you got <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nine Japanese girls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Only, uh, only me, English. <laughs> See, and I talk a little weird now, too, because I'd be like, oh, only me. Or uh, like like little things they said to me during the time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I noticed that I don't say whole sentences sometimes. Because you got used to like doing the only what is necessary to try to get your point across. Yes. Them. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever I didn't need Google Translate for. <laughs> so do you know a little bit of Japanese going into this? Um, I know a little bit, like I can tell you thank you. Arigato <laughs> dozaimas and <laughs> uh good morning, Ohio. So like little things, mm -hmm. uh water, Mizu. Uh I I don't remember everything, mm -hmm. but I could like after I would hear things all the time, I would know what they were saying. I can count to like almost thirty. Right. Good for me. <laughs> um, but like I said, the first day I was like, I can't I, what did I do? I messed up. So I, I tried to immediately purchase a plane ticket to come home, right? I was like, I can change my flight, right? And then like, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And I was like, you need to calm down, go to sleep. When you wake up, everything's going to be better. Mm -hmm. And I went to sleep and I woke up and I was, I, I realized I was just really tired and I was cranky. Um, 
You you were on a flight for 16 hours. Yeah, I was being a little overboard, a little overdramatic. Uh, well, at first, I was staying in a dorm room with the young girls. So there were, I was sharing a room with five girls. So like that was a lot to me, you mm-hmm. know, not sharing a room with anyone for a, a long time. And then all of a sudden, living with a bunch of girls. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's like loud there's always people there's always people moving around there's uh the dogs so it was just it was that was a big change for me um wrestling training we had almost every single day uh a typical day of mine consisted of I'd wake up around 8 I would go downstairs and have breakfast which was usually for them it was the dinner they had the night before and Something culturally with like Asians, they don't always put their, they don't refrigerate food like we do necessarily. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. the food stays on the stove overnight and then you just like reheat it in the morning. And I I knew this because I had lived with another Asian family whenever I lived in California. Um, But I just couldn't eat beef stew and stuff like that for breakfast. So I went out and I had to find like at the train stations, you could find like American stuff. So like oatmeal and stuff like that. Um, so 8 o'clock in the morning, wake up, eat. 10.30, we have our first training of the day, which is conditioning. So that would be mostly cardio, lifting weights, um, lifting each other, stuff like that. We would, like, carry each other up hills. It was intense. Like, it was super intense. They don't mess around. Like, they they train hard. They're really passionate about what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so after training ended at 12.30, We'd have lunch break. I would usually take a nap. 2.30, we start in-ring training. So it's like bumps and bumps and sparring. Lots of sparring. We just sparred all the time. Um, So mat wrestling and grappling. And it was hard because it was every day. And I always that's one thing I've always heard, you know, stories from people like, you know, Super Hentai and, and when the Gambinos went over there, they said that dojo life is is a lot harder training than they experienced or that they 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 had, you know, seen people coming through at the time. And, and of course, you, you came out through OVW, which yeah. you know, was one of the top training in the country. Um, how did that kind of compare in, in difficulty? So. It was like OVW is like nothing compared to the training yeah. there. It honestly, and I was thinking about how I hear kids complain at training, like da da da, and I'm like, you don't say no to your trainer in yeah. Japan. You don't say no if you don't know how to do something. You learn how to do it. You just keep practicing and practicing and practicing until it is perfect. Yeah, I'm surprised they do here. <laughs> yeah, and like it's it's crazy to me. Um, I think everyone should experience it just mm-hmm. because of the work ethic. Mm-hmm. Like you really get an appreciation for the culture and how hard they work. Um, This one girl, for example, she was, they drop out of school at like 15 to become wrestlers and they move in and this is their entire life. They don't do anything else. Um, They clean the dojo. They cook all the food in the dojo. They take care of the dogs. They take care of the ring. They take care of anyone that's um, their senpai. So, or the foreigner, which is me. So okay. senpai is the okay. person like um, higher above you. So they take care of that person. And then they're expected to train what we trained. I think we trained more than any other dojo, though. We trained like six hours a day, which wow. is insane, right? And that's that's seven days a week except for show days, right? Uh, we have the day after show days off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's whenever I got to do all my like exploring and stuff was mm-hmm. the day after show days or every once in a while, like, um, since our trainer was such a big deal in Japan, like she did a lot of TV and a lot of press. So on like press days, they didn't know. I didn't always have to go for press days cause I was the foreigner. Right. Mm-hmm. So I would get those days off too sometimes. Which is nice because I wanted to see Japan. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about that. You know, again, you weren't like deep into the city, which is probably probably a lot easier to to adjust to, right? I think. Or worse, because you live in a city. <laughs> uh, I think it was hard because it was more out in the outskirts, um, really secluded. So on some days, like I said, I didn't. I was the only um, English speaking person that lived there. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of alone a lot of time. So whenever I would go out on these adventures, I made friends with a girl named Alex Lee. 
Um, she's an Australian girl that's lived over there for seven years. Uh, I would meet up with her and go into the city, but I feel like if I would have been in the city, I would have got to go out and do more things as opposed to it took me an hour to get to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So, so I really kind of truncated what you could get out and do. Yeah. Oh, we're showing some pictures. If you are with us on video, it's hey, Tokyo you... station. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you find your oatmeal? Yes. <laughs> And actually, any train station, I could find oatmeal and peanut butter because I needed peanut butter. Um, this is a shrine. I think this was actually by where I lived in Funabashi. Mm -hmm. The shrines were so beautiful. Uh, peaceful. Very peaceful. That's nice. Yeah, I noticed that there's a lot of this. You know, my visit to Thailand, there was a lot of the shrines and in, 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 you know, all over the place. You'd be in a very, very like city atmosphere. And then there's like the shrine, a little bit of grass and, and, and stuff like that. Was it kind of that kind of a, a setup? Yeah, but no no grass. Okay. So it, it, it's funny that you say that because my grandmother was actually like, is there grass there, honey? I'm like, yeah, grandma, of course there's grass. And then I looked around and I was like, oh, maybe they don't have grass here. There's a lot of cabbage, mm -hmm. a lot of cabbage, but maybe not uh, no grass. <laughs> Yeah, because it's uh, well, I think everybody thinks Tokyo, right? What they see in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, even out in the countryside, like um, I, I don't know if maybe it was winter, so they were they pull the grass up and replant it or something, but it was mostly dirt. Mm -hmm. And looking at some more pictures here. Uh, thankfully, if you if you do follow her on uh, on, I believe you do have a prof public profile on Facebook, right? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen to be a friend, uh, she's got a good folder over there of Japan that you guys can check out that we're uh, scrolling through as we're talking here. Um, you did see the pandas. We were having a good conversation about pandas. You I did, love pandas. You did. You did. You did. You fight any of the? Did you see any of the giant panda uh, <laughs> wrestlers we've been seeing in videos here? Um, I didn't. But one of the videos that you were actually talking about, my friend Alex, the, the Australian girl. Yeah. Yeah, she actually wrestled one of the giant pandas. Nice. So she sent me a picture. She's like, I'm on TV. Look at this. What is life? I'm like, bro, that is life. That is so cool. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to see that. But she, I think she did that right after I left. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like all the rage. But you did see a real panda. I saw a couple real pandas. I went to Wayno uh, Park and Zoo. It's so beautiful. And the one was a baby. Nice. Chan Chan, that was his name. Chan Chan. Chan, Chan. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the shows themselves. What what, what is a uh, uh, with this promotion like? What what is a Japanese show like for you from your perspective uh, compared to what you experience here? And of course, we talked about the lucha shows as well. So they take it a lot more serious. Um, it is a fight. So whenever one of your teammates is fighting, um, we all have tracksuits. So you go to your show in your tracksuit. You wear your colors. Just like, like, like in high school. Like the sweet New Japan tracksuits that we see. Yeah. I had um, a marvelous tracksuit and I would wear it. And at our shows, we all went out beforehand and um, bowed to the audience. And any other show we went to, because I worked for Sendai, I worked for Diana. Um, a lot of the other girls worked for Seedling. And we wore our tracksuit when we would go to our shows or when we would go to any media. Um, you are a team. And you're, it's your family. Mm -hmm. It's everything. So one of your, um, when your team is in the ring, you can, you see like people on the outskirts of that picture. So like our people stand beside the ring and they give you water and they assist you as soon as the match is over with like ice packs and stuff like and that. And these are other members of the roster? Yeah. Oh, nice. So like my marvelous people would be on the side and like Sendai's people would be on the Sendai corner, kind of more like boxing. Okay. So I thought that was a really cool, like I loved it. Um, the fans, it's different, right? Cause we have that. This is awesome. Um, there it's more like, Raylan! like that's exactly how it sounds. And that's how they would cheer. And that there was this one guy in particular, like I knew when he was there and he was like at every single one of my shows, whether it was in Osaka or Sendai <laughs> or whatever he, and he was always Raylan. I'm like, that's my dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But I, I think, um, my favorite moment was whenever I finally got streamer and it was in my, my gear colors. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I made it. They know who I am. Um, <laughs> One of my favorite shows, I think, was in Osaka because before, even before I got there, like um, 
fans were like, oh, Raylan's coming to Osaka. I'm like, how do they know who I am in Osaka? It was like mind blowing, right? Mm -hmm. So then I got there and I'm selling merch and they're like, oh yeah, we follow you. And I'm like, this is so cool. Like, it, oh, I, there was that there, we're in our track suits. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it made me like cry because I was just so happy. It was just such a moment. Awesome. And, th and this looks like, uh, this is, this is a pretty, good production like they're, they're, you got match graphics and everything on screen um you know the pictures i've been seeing like you know throughout your yeah. trip on twitter and everything and the, and, the, and the the clips and everything looked amazing so even if you're indie wrestling here has a bad name sometimes right because right. you're thinking like oh you're wrestling in like a church bathroom i'm gonna go to a church bathroom right it's gonna be that small yeah um there, even whenever it is like a smaller venue, like they, it somehow comes together and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I think I wrestled in like one auditorium there, like a gym, like we would hear on a smaller show. And even still, like the lights were really cool. <laughs> they get to cover that up pretty good. Yeah, they, they do a great job of covering it up. But a lot of the venues are just strictly like wrestling venues. So mm -hmm. the ring stays up. Um, uh, it just... They have the lighting and the rings and they always have the projection. It just, everything was so professional. So coming home has been really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, especially since like I was under contract, I knew how much I was getting paid. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to bargain with promoters. I didn't have to say <laughs> you have to cover my trans. I didn't have to be, you have to worry about where I sleep. You have to do this. Yeah. It was all included. Yeah. And it was no BS. Like everything was in a contract and I knew exactly what I was getting into every single time I wrestled. That's awesome. For three months. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, Japan's not the only thing you've been doing lately. Um, for those uh, that have been watching out, there's uh, somebody that looks a lot like you over on Access TV these days. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. And uh, and I'm probably... Chantilly Chella. Close. Chantilly Dad, Chella. messing it up. Chantilly Chella. <laughs> Chantilly, right? Right. It's like four <laughs> syllables. <laughs> How did that come about? This is, and it's a different product, right? It's, it's, it's. It feels very glow. It feels very um, uh, more theatrical. It, it's, it's, it's fun. It, it's so fun, and it's lively, and it's colorful, and it's bright, and it's women's empowerment. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, I'm really glad I got picked to be a part of the whole wow roster. And I came about that with luck too. I moved to LA. Um, mm -hmm. Someone saw me wrestling in LA and told me to contact David McLean of wow. They used me for their Friday night fights. And I heard that they were doing a TV taping. And I was kind of sad because I didn't get contacted. Mm -hmm. But a week before the show, he called David McLean calls. And I pick up my phone. He goes, David McLean. And I'm like, I know I have color ID, right? <laughs> 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 I got color ID. I know. <laughs> How you doing? He's like, I have this great idea. He goes, I look at you and I know, and like, he knew that I like to go to festivals and he knew that I like bright colors and I like bright lipstick. And I was really into all that. And he's like, I want you to bring your EDM lifestyle to wrestling. Your EDM lifestyle. Yes. Plur. <laughs> <laughs> I I am not connected with the EDM lifestyle at all. <laughs> That's great. Um, and I know I've I've caught a little bit of you in action over there. And again, it's kind of that studio show, right? Like it's it's got that it's got that kind of high production going on. Oh, the production is so beautiful and my purple hair with that purple ring. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> you match everything. <laughs> That's great. But it, it, how, how has that been for you? Are, are you <laughs> Because they're just you kind of have a, uh, two different personalities now, you know, with the kind of doing the wow uh, character and everything. I do. So for so long on the indies, everyone was using me as a heel because mm -hmm. that's what they were used to. They're like, Raylan's think, a heel. I think the first time I saw you, you were singing Miley Cyrus. Yes. <laughs> and I think David McLean also saw that video. And oh, he knew no. that I was, he's like, oh, she's like bubbly and poppy. So even when I was a heel, I've always been like, yeah bubbly and I'm into humor. Like I like things that are funny. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was always a heel. And then after people saw me on wow, they're like, Oh, you're a good baby face. I'm like, well, 
I mean, I'm a wrestler. I, mm -hmm. I have to adapt to whatever mm -hmm. situation you put me in. Um, I really like my WoW character. And uh, I kind of feel like Harley Quinn, Raylan, and Chantilly are like all kind of merging together. Like I, I feel like I'm just coming up with like this whole different style for all bits of my wrestling, which is fun. Like I'm just trying to develop as much as I can. That's awesome. And it, it, other than that, you, you've also been popping up just this, just this past weekend. I'm sad I couldn't be here for this. Way too much going on. But you were here for uh, Ring of Honor. Yes. Uh, getting a shot on there. And uh, not your first, of course. And uh, and also you've been around for Impact Wrestling as well. You're making all the rounds on TV these days. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure people know this space right here. <laughs> like... <laughs> and bringing it to our show as well. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Remember me. <laughs> Well, uh, typically, usually, I think the last time you were on, we uh, usually ask what's the best and worst about uh, indie wrestling. But this time, I'm just going to ask what's the what's what's the best thing about being in Japan, and what's the best thing about wrestling in Japan separately. Oh, okay, so the best thing. I, I have a feeling there's not going to be too many negatives, so we're just rolling with the positive here. I mean, there were some negatives, but I mean, I was very happy there. Mm -hmm. you I'll tell you what the negative is when you people told me this they say when you come home you're gonna get depressed it's it's a thing you get depressed when you leave Japan and you really do like I said you have to deal with promoters again you have to go back to work mm -hmm. you have to go back to living your life how it was before whereas I didn't have to work I training was work yeah wrestling was work eating the food I needed to eat was my job and then I come home and I'm like Wow. Reality slapped me so hard in the face. Mm -hmm. I was just, it, oh, and like you don't drive there either. You get in a bus and you sleep on your way to shows. My first show was three days later. I was in the car with like all these girls jammed up, not sleeping. And I'm just like, oh, I'm back home. Like <laughs> it, it's weird. Send me back to Japan. Yeah. I, I, I would say maybe over the uh, past couple weeks, I'm still like, I'm still trying to get into being home I'm still mm -hmm. try it hasn't even been a month that i've been home yet so i'm still trying to like get my footing back um so the best part about being in japan was the girls i lived with i love them so much and i can't wait to go back and see them like they helped me they fed me they made sure i didn't get uh lost i was taken care of really well i really was and the food's amazing too that's awesome yeah so, so looking for that that return contract for Japan, right? <laughs> I, I feel they they love me. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, Raylan, come back soon, very soon. Um, they wanted me to come back a little bit too soon, so we'll see when I actually <laughs> do go back. I need to like reacclimate, and mm -hmm. then yeah, yeah, figure out your cadence, right? Your your kind of cultural cadence, like readjust. Okay, go back. You yeah, know. yeah, uh, that's amazing. Um, is there anything? Of your Japan work, like, again, mostly I saw just clips through your social mm -hmm. media, but is, is there anything online that people can check out your action from over there? So Sendai actually post full, um, their full shows on YouTube. So, oh, nice. uh, one of my favorite matches is up there. Um, let me look it up real quick. Don't mind me looking at my phone. <laughs> That's and being fine. Rude. Live on the internet right here. And the Sendai, uh, by the way, Sendai I, I'm familiar with because, uh, there was a year of King of Trios that we attended where they were um um had a team there and i believe it was the first year where they had uh all all women in the finals of the king of trios um as well so not if you if you keep an eye on the indies here i know they, they make their rounds a good bit here all right so um it was the sendai girls and it was three nine nineteen so that was one of my favorite shows I was on. I had a ton of fun in that match. That was like one of my getting ready to go home matches. Um, and that was when I really started getting into my flow of Japanese wrestling too, understanding it. Uh, but yeah, all my Sunday matches are up there. Unfortunately, like I did have one really bad match when I got there and that's on there too. Ooh. Don't judge me. Uh, we're all performers. We're working really hard still to try work, to put out the Still best. working through that jet lag, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. All the awesome. things. Oh, I think I'm actually playing something there. Uh, awesome. So where can people check you out online and, and keep up with you and uh, Chantilly and everything? <laughs> so you can find me online, um, Twitter, at 
Ray Lynn at R A Y underscore L Y N. Um, or you can follow Chantilly Chella at I can't even remember that one. Don't follow that one. Follow Ray Lynn, and then you can click right in my bio. It has Chantilly Chella. There you go. Make it easy. Yes. I, I know. I think you all have your own Instagram and everything. For, yeah, for Chantilly that. has her own Instagram. Yeah. Um, my Instagram is at Ray Star Five R A Y S T A R Five, and then right in my link, you can click on Chantilly Chella too, because I don't remember that one. Either. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of all over the place. I usually ask, uh, you know, what generally. Are we seeing you pop up in the coming months here, uh, promotion wise? But you're you are kind of everywhere. Other, you know, wow. And, and I am. You know, I'm just. I'm five years into my career now. Mm-hmm. I've hit almost every single goal that I've set out for myself in the beginning. Um, so it's kind of like a big what's next year. I, mm-hmm. I'm in that in the stage right now where I don't know what's next. I'm just I'm waiting for it. I'm not waiting for it. I'm putting out the vibes (laughs) at the same time. So we'll see what's coming. I do have wow tapings uh, Mm -hmm. in a few weeks, so that'll be fun. And then who knows what's after that? Looking forward to that. I'm hoping hoping I line up with one of my business trips out to L.A. here to catch you in action uh, at one of those tapings, too. So it sounds like a lot of fun. I can hook you up with tickets if you make it. Oh, might have to. All right. (laughs) We'll be talking after this recording. And uh, that's fantastic. Hey, Raylan, it's been great to to, you know see you in action, see you develop here over the last several years. Thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you for having me back. It's been great. Go check her out. And, of course, a lot of action is over on IndieWrestling.us, including that Lucia Fiesta show that we were talking about that happened right across the street from here, guys. Like, literally, wrestling came to us. That's amazing. Put out those those vibes. Uh, and, of course, over at IndieWrestling.network is our subscription service. That has a lot of uh, action from the IWC and other things as well. Uh, and uh, until next time, please support Indie Wrestling no matter what country. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.